Well, hello there, YouTube. And welcome to Monday, October the 4th. It's about 60 degrees out here at the moment. Feels quite nice. Did I scare you, Kylie? You wouldn't expect me to be sitting out here. <laughs> Today is a iPhone 13 Pro Max day. And uh, it's almost 1 o'clock and I'm getting a little concerned because I'm getting conflicting information between Apple and UPS. UPS says it'll be here today, but now Apple is saying it'll be here next Monday. There's one major problem with this. When I ordered it, it would not, um, I usually send everything to work because one, there's people always there and you know, it's just a much more secure thing to do. Well, it has to be signed for. Well, I had to take the day off today because I have to sign for it. And the worst thing ever is if, you know, how sometimes they'll just throw the package down even though it says it's mandatory that it's signed for. Well, if it doesn't show up today, I just took a day off for nothing. Anyway, I'm not panicking just yet. But uh, let me show you something I've been doing in the in the shop here. This isn't good. Kelly had a little mishap on the way home last night. <laughs> no, she didn't. It's been driving me nuts riding up behind her and the mufflers are, are turned. This one was turned. I mean, it is so close, but I could notice it. And the OCD in me kind of got a little crazy. I don't know if I can hold that in a way that you can see that they're, that they're straight now. The little slash cuts, they were off. So I didn't know if I was gonna have to uh, loosen they're rubber and they shouldn't, but I thought, well, let's take a look at what it looks like underneath there anyway. It's no big deal to take the the whole rear piece off of it. It comes off quite easy. But as I'm looking around, man, good pride and stuff that you buy, you know. There's a reason you stick with something you know and love. This thing is built like a truck. I mean, seriously? It's like overkill. Look at that guard around the rear pulley. Diff, assembly, whatever you call all that. There's your, your gear for your electronic reverse. Look at the size of the electronic reverse motor. That thing's at least twice the size of the starter motor. This thing would probably climb a wall if it could get traction. But I mean, really? I mean, this thing is built like a brick outhouse. Like overkill. It's like, dang, Harley. I know you like to build them tough and strong, but geez, that's nuts. And just the quality of everything, the welds are really nice. And like, I, it just the one thing just keeps coming through my head overkill. Did not have to build that thing that robust. But Harley's going to do what Harley wants to do. And that's why I keep coming back. But look at the size of that motor. It's huge. There's the engine starter. There's the motor that's used for, uh, for the reverse mechanism. And just like the starter, it's a, like an automotive style Bendix. Harley's been using that forever. You can actually see the Bendix right there. So she bounces out. Grabs that big old spur gear back there and things started to turn. And that's what's funny, that gear, the ratio of that gear has just got to be crazy. So why do you need such a big, massive motor on that thing for reverse? Don't know, don't care, but I love it. Pride makes you proud to own them. All Harleys have a hardwired in uh battery tender lead and uh, I never use the stock when I add one to it just in case <laughs> every once in a while I'll pull the bike out and forget that it's plugged in here's wham and I'm like jeez glad I added it, an additional one to it in case I rip them out I don't want to rip it out of the harness this literally goes into the harness which is great that they provide that I just never use the OEM one I don't want to, you know, after time, the plugs get loose and kind of worn feeling. 
That's actually not route. There's actually a proper way to route that on. They were probably using it to charge the battery. But I'll put it in here correctly. But I'm going to add. There's the negative and the positives underneath here. I just add my own and just leave it kind of dangling somewhere. And if for some reason it gets loose and wore out, I just throw another. I always use the Optimate leads. I don't use anything else. Really impressed at how well that thing is built. You wonder why Harleys weigh as much as what they do? That's a lot of iron in the back of that thing. So if your Harley has a security system, see the fob hanging off the thing right there. If you have a security system before you, because you have to disconnect the battery to get these tender leads installed, do not disconnect anything until you power it up and it's really easy to get carried away and unplug uh, or take that battery cover off just stop don't do and the reason i'm about to tell you is because on most of them the ignition switch connects it clicks into that battery tray so with everything together side cover off so you have access to that 50 amp or 40 amp depending on which one you have Power the bike up, make sure it sees the fob and your security goes off. You don't have anything flashing. Reach in there and pull the main fuse on all the modern ones. It's on the left hand, left hand, left hand side. It could be a 40, it could be a 50. Unplug that with the key on and the security disarmed. In other words, powered up like you're about to start it and ride it. Pull that 50 or 40 amp fuse. And then at that point, because it makes it easy to get this tray out, most times disconnect your ignition switch. I pull the, the e ECM out and set it aside. Reason being, if you let this thing slip, and I've seen this happen, seen it on, a, on plenty of Indians, you let that slip and touch that positive battery terminal, you have a very expensive repair on your hands. So I disconnect it and set it aside. Then I pull the tray and stuff out. And then, like I say, it's easier to pull the ignition switch wires. It just makes everything coming out a lot easier. So secure, make sure you use dielectric grease, which I did on both terminals. Make sure they're tight. Don't go buck wily and strip out the lead post on these things or whatever they're made out of now. That's not part of the, I think that's part of the security. I don't even know what it is, but anyway, get those bolted up. And remember when you're taking the, the post off and you want to have them both disconnected while you're doing it, take negative off first, set it aside, take the positive off. And when you're going back together with your tender leads, put the positive on first, make sure the negative's not touching. Then when you're ready, put the negative side on. And then from here, Put everything back together and at the very end make sure your key is off it doesn't have to be powered up anymore because when you unplug pull the fuse out it powers the bike down just go ahead and turn the ignition off get everything back together make sure everything's plugged in make dang sure your ecm is plugged back in and then at the very end plug that fuse in when you power it up your alarm is nice and set and secure everything's right where it was you miss that step with that alarm and it can uh, it can be a mess to get back out of that. A lot of times you can just kind of power everything down and get it back. But we've definitely, definitely had some Harleys at the store where someone that shouldn't be working on them decides they're going to put a battery in for the customer right quick. And uh, yeah, and these alarms inside of a building are immensely loud crazy loud you're not gonna miss it <laughs> the little tip of the day for you harley folks use some good dielectric grease loctite wherever it requires loctite but uh don't dielectric grease waterproof connections do you know why you don't do that because the, the dielectric grease can hydraulic and literally deep in and push clips out and I'm here to tell you, I've had to deal with that. Usually these smaller ones like this, people take the 
take this and pack that. Oh, yeah, we'll get some good old dielectric grease in there with our waterproof connection. And they're very, very airtight. So you'll hear them go, you'll hear them, the air being forced past the waterproof seals. Well, you get it all greased up, that air doesn't sneak past there. And um, yeah, it can de-pin them. You'll wonder why it doesn't work and you'll look and one of the pins are pushed back. You usually see it on this side. You look down and one of the pins are shorter than the rest if you don't see the coupler coming out. But like these, they have waterproof rears on them so it's much harder to see. Yeah, you'll, that'll, you'll chase electrical problem for quite a while just because somebody put dielectric grease on a waterproof connector. Don't do that. All right, let me get this thing back together. I'm just gonna jaw jack with y'all. Once you know you have everything plugged in, stowed away, a little alarm sensor, your ignition switch, little power port, DME, make sure it's, or ECM, it's all plugged in correctly. Then, oh, make sure your fob is near the bike as well. I don't know if you guys can see that thing dangling there. Make sure the fob is near and plug it in. And your light should flash. The normal thing when it sets the security system and you should see the flashing light on the dash. And I always turn the key on, make sure everything boots up and the alarm goes off. The light will stay solid for a second and then it powers down. Then you turn it off, you get the double flashing uh, turn signals, and the alarm flashes in the dash. Your security system is all steady. So what I do with the tender leads too, I make the fuse for the tender lead accessible. I always find those things burn out. People plug different things into them or they'll overload them. This is a fairly small fuse uh, stock. Although uh, because they're such better quality, I noticed that a uh, Optimate uh, battery leads at 15. A lot of those only have a five. But if you see the wires they're using, that's probably about all the more I would dare put on that thing. It's a good quality wires, good quality uh, connectors. And then for the uh, lead, let's get a light on here right quick. Clicky, clicky. I just get it in a way that I can tuck it out of the way and it's nice and flat. And then the rubber of that will just ride whatever. Don't let it drop down and fall down into your belt down there or something crazy like that. There's that little breather. This was actually an option a while back. That little breather that goes in the back of that. You remember that? Back in the early days of the Milwaukee 8s. Now they all come with it. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys one thing. I uh, come in here last night with Kelly's bike. And I'm manipulating the thing around. And all of a sudden, there's a fan running. I'm like, looking all around. I said, where the heck is a fan coming? I said, wait a minute. The fan's coming from the bike. The oil cooler comes standard with the fan. That's a, a high-dollar option for my uh, Road King over there. Dad gummit. I'm going to steal the radiator off of the or oil cooler off of the. No, I'd never do that. Anyway, that's pretty cool, huh? Maybe the bigger bike. I notice it runs at um, higher RPMs too, so the gearing is different on this than it is on the on the other bikes. Noticeably, I forget what it was, but we were I was reading them off. Of course, I'm comparing it to the Slim, which you think would be somewhat low geared. But I even noticed that going down the freeway when I was bringing this thing home. I go, I don't think this thing runs as many RPMs at 70 or whatever, so they got it geared a little lower as well. Anyway, make sure everything's nice and neat. When you put everything back on, it doesn't pinch anything. And uh, you're good to go. Now you got a battery tender lead. Now I'm using the Spider one for the, for the GT650. So maybe I'll steal that, but I bolted that one to the wall. <laughs> we'll sort it out. Actually, the cord's long enough it'll fill, fit over here, but anyway, that's that for that. Let's see what a little woman's at on her nap. We'll get this thing back together. So there she is, all reassembled. Haven't sorted out the uh, where I'm going to run a tender to it or optimate. Mama came up, helped me get the thing on. Everything's good. Even waxed her down with Flogenics again, so she's all nice and clean. 
And uh, suddenly the sun came out. While well, I've spent so much time with this with you guys, I thought we would introduce the motor vlog side to the flirty. I don't even know if I've done, I'm pretty sure I did a thing about the Road King. Yeah, it's been over a year. Anyway, um, so we're going to ride over there. I've never done a dual vlog with the little honey on that side. So there will be a ride, it'll just be on the other channel. So from that, sun's out, we're going to bounce. Thanks for uh, hanging out with a Harley Tech Tip Day on the daily vlog. But don't worry, there'll be a ride on the other channel. In case for some reason there's a delay in me getting the moto vlog side up. Remember, it's all down in the description. Most of the questions I get asked, the answer is in the description. Man, does that thing look good. And there's such a cool contrast between the Road King and that. I just absolutely love the look. Super, super cool. I was saying a quick hello to the, to our daily peeps. Just in case I don't get this uploaded right away. And we come down, seen a, a flashing yellow light northbound. We get down here, get our helmets off. Dead gum train goes by. Yep. That was loud too. Yep. Wow. Alrighty. So, back to the task at hand. Well, hello there, YouTube. How about that? A little tech talk daily vlog today. Don't go. forget, go bounce over to the to the. Uh, it's, it's just called Sean Smoke Channel. I refer to it as a motor vlog, just simply Sean Smoke. And um, anyway, we took a little ride today. Nothing much kind of places we've been before but you should see us fun. go for a little a little loop again it was lots of fun always fun not that much i'm telling you what that guy i just keep going on and on the more i look at that thing the better it looks it is gorgeous yeah it's, it's weird how different that motor is when i fired up to to drive it in the garage there at the end i'm like i like this 114 man this it has a different sound and a different feel more rumbly lively feeling which I like in a hog <laughs> that thing's nice sounds nice. good looks good she loves it I'm gonna well, throw you guys for a loop and we take off in those Himalayans oh I know I have to do that just to stir them up yeah cycle the gas in them or something yeah knock the cobwebs out yeah yeah, yeah. But anyway, I think on that, we're going to roll out on you. Alrighty. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. We will talk to you tomorrow. Same smoke time, same smoke channel. Don't forget to give a thumbs up. And you guys have an amazing Tuesday or Wednesday. Heck yeah. Bummer about my phone not showing yep. up. But luckily, uh, I got it transferred to deliver somewhere else. UPS Rockstars. Yeah, there we go. It's not their fault. Yeah. So it looks like it's still hung in China somewhere. So who knows? But anyway. Uh, more on that later once I get a confirmation. I feel like I got a Leo fur on me or something. Oh, probably. Everything I have has Leo fur. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see you bright and early in the morning. It should be raining. We'll take the old war wagon to work. Yeah. All right. See you then. We'll see you then. Thanks now. Bye-bye.